Hello everyone. Um, it has been almost two years, if not longer, since I have made a video. Um, it feels kind of strange and weird uh, because I just haven't done this in a while, but I really wanted to um, just sit down and talk with you guys um, and share a bit about what is going on in our life right now. And back in June, if you follow me on Instagram, then you would have seen me share that Andrew and I are currently walking through infertility. I haven't shared much of our story or exactly what's going on, mainly because it was really fresh when I did share it in June. Um, and also because I have been trying to figure out how much to share or um, the way in which I share it. And so, I had been kind of praying through it and thinking through what does that look like? Uh, is it just a quick Instagram story? Is it a really thorough video giving you guys all of the details and just all of where we are? Um, and then <clears throat> and then was able to um, have the opportunity for a really good friend of mine um, and her nonprofit to create this video and it really felt like it was the right time and the right context to share it. So, all of that to say, um, I do wanna start first because I feel like I'm gonna get asked this, I already do on social media, um, of where Andrew is and why he isn't a part of this video. It might seem strange because it's obviously both of our journey and both of our story. And honestly, the only reason is that he's not used to sitting in front of a camera talking like I am, like I've been doing that for 10 years of my life now. And so I'm gonna respect and honor the fact that it's just not natural for him to just sit and kind of put everything out there. It's easier for me. And so we both were like, okay, trusted me to be able to communicate clearly to you guys just where we are. And um, that's the only reason he's not here. So I wanna also start with that because I just know people are gonna be like, well, why isn't he in the video with you? Um, yeah, so. Let's just dive on in. Uh, so Andrew and I got married last May. A lot of you know that. Um, and we had really decided pretty early on that we wanted to start trying for a family. Um, and so a few months into marriage, we made the decision of like, okay, let's start trying. And you know, we're surrounded by a lot of people and family members and friends who um, it maybe took a month or two and we started seeing ours two, three, four months going by and nothing was happening. And so we both decided, okay, at the six month mark, a lot of people would say, well, until you've tried a year, you aren't able to you know, get tested or to find out if there's anything going on or whatever. Um, I don't know if it was just a God thing, but I had called a fertility clinic here in Nashville at the six month mark and just asked if we could get some testing done and they let us in, which really is a God thing because I've heard of them turning other people away until they know that they've been trying officially for one year. Um, and so we had made a really early Monday morning appointment in February and we just went to sit down. We kind of shared what was going on and they were like, well, let's get Andrew tested and let's get some blood work and stuff for you first because those are the easiest tests to do. Uh, and then from there we can go because you are still only six months into trying. Um, and by, let's see, that was Monday morning. And so by lunchtime, um, we had, by lunchtime we got a call saying that there was some problems with Andrew's testing. And based on the testing, um, he was unable to have children. And so they said we should do some further tests. They gave us a urologist here in town who specializes in male reproductive urology. Um, we were able to get in with him two days later and we did more blood work, more tests. And what we were waiting to find out was if this was a physical issue that could be 
fixed or if this was um, a genetic issue and there were different tests that could show that. And so what we did find out about a month later was that Andrew has something that is called Y chromosomal deletion. And that means that the Y chromosome linked to his reproductive system was deleted when he was formed in the womb. Um, and that has caused him to have something else called obliospermia, um, which means that he has less than 200 um, sperm, uh, which in a in the average male has about 15 million, just to put into perspective um, the numbers. And so less than 2% of men in the world actually have this and have this condition. Um, and so unfortunately, you know, right off the bat, they, the doctors told us in like a 20 minute conversation, like, yeah, you'll, you have like, next to no chance of ever having biological children naturally. Um, so do what you will with that information. Call us if you want to sign up for different treatments or different things. Um, and that's where they left us. Um, and so for the first month, I just kind of went into mourning and just couldn't even fathom trying to make any types of decisions. Uh, Andrew and I process things like this differently. I'm more like, I'm gonna feel everything right off the bat and you're not even gonna get me out of bed. Andrew's like, okay, I will feel later. I need to make sure that those around me, my wife, my family are taken care of. Um, and so we handled the news differently, but um, it just still hit us very hard. It's obviously not something that you would ever expect. Um, not ever, something you would expect to get just a phone call from um, or to just hear, you know, within five minutes that everything you thought was probably going to happen is not. So we had made the decision, you know, for a couple months to just kind of feel and process what we were going through and um and we just didn't really know there were so many unanswered questions because um you know you just have people telling you very quickly these things not giving you a lot more answers or are there like are there any cases of this being reversed or people having success naturally even with this type of condition like we just had so many questions and so i just went on down a rabbit hole of like trying to find any and every resource that I could, um, whether it was alternative, whether it was people who had just walked through the same thing, um, just trying to see if anyone had any other answers or any other bits. That's Bernie's bell, he has to go potty. Bernie's distracting me because he wants attention. Um, so, we just, that's kind of where we were at for the first few months. And I didn't know if I was going to share any of this with you guys. I didn't know how much to share. Um, I completely cut off social media for five months from that point on because I couldn't go on and then just act like, hey, here's what I'm doing in the house. Cause I'm like, hey, I barely have made it out of bed today. Um, but I also just wasn't ready to share anything because, you know, it's a weird tension with all of us in social media of like, how much do you share? How much do you not share? Like, where is that line of keeping things private, but also especially having a platform going, okay, Lord, am I called to utilize this and to share? Because not a lot of people are talking about this. Um, and the people who are talking about their infertility journeys or or just struggles in general like it's more natural for us to share after the fact like once we feel like we're on the other side as opposed to in the midst of it because it's just hard to say this is just what we're in the middle of and we have no idea what we're walking towards like we don't know where we're going um, and so it just feels even more vulnerable to not only share like a really intimate part of our life but also that like we have no idea what it's gonna look like we have no idea what we're walking towards or walking into um, and so 
you know, now being seven months out since the news and officially, you know, a little over a year of trying for a child. Um, I'm just kind of sick of not just being like, this is where I am. Um, this is where we are. And, and that goes for every area of our life. Andrew's like, why are you telling so-and-so about this? I'm like, because I just think it's exhausting keeping it all in. Um, and it's like embarrassing to a point. It's, it's confusing. It's all of these things when we're opening up about these struggles and trials that all of us are going through, not just what we're going through, but it can just feel very just raw. But I'm just at a place where I don't care. <laughs> I really don't like, um, yeah, that's just where I'm at. And so we had decided to share in June um, a little bit into what we're walking through on Instagram. Um, that took off way more than I anticipated. Um, the video, I don't, I guess you'd, I don't know if you'd consider it viral, but it's up to like 5 million views, which I wasn't anticipating. Um, there's been a lot of love that has been poured out from that video. There's been a lot of opinions, um, a lot of stories, um, and, and some type of hatred of like, okay, are you seeking attention? Who, who like opens up about this type of stuff? Who films themselves praying, waiting for the results of a pregnancy test? Like who films a video sitting and going through all the details of their infertility journey? And, um, and so it's been weird trying to navigate all of that. And what I haven't done, and I guess what I'm kind of hoping today is, is really addressing like where our hearts and our minds are in the midst of this, because there's a lot of different opinions on how as Christians we should handle this type of news. Um, there's a lot of opinions of what faith looks like, a lot of opinions of what um, faithfulness looks like and God's will and all of these different things. And so I just wanna address like, hey, here's where we are. Here's how in light of scripture, we're processing through it um, and we're okay with that. And so I am okay with you listening to any of the stuff that we share of where we are, of um, the scriptures we're leaning on and pressing into. And you're like, I don't think, I don't think that's the way it is or that's how it should be processed. That's fine. This is just where we are and this is where we feel the Lord has placed us and the um, and just the mindset and perspective that He has given us and and we are okay with that and we are okay with other people thinking totally differently than us or thinking we might be thinking about it, going about it all the wrong way. Like we're on this journey, it's still very new and we are walking faithfully just trying to go, Lord, what is the next faithful step that we are called to take? Um, I think one difficult part of trials and tragedy within the Christian walk is our instinct is to just go, okay, well, like this isn't God's best. So let's pray this trial away. Let's pray for deliverance. Let's pray for the miracle. Let's pray that, you know, we just have the baby. Let's pray for all of these things. And like, let's just believe God for better. And that would have been me and that was me a few years ago and for whatever reason the lord has really shifted my perspective of asking the question like what if this is god's best and like what if right now in this specific season of time his best for us is to not have a child yet and it's so there's a part of it that's so unfathomable because you think that you can create like, well, no, obviously what would be absolute best is for us to have a baby right now, right? Like you call us to be fruitful and multiply and, and we can go down those things and those mindsets and those thoughts. But then you look at scripture and you look at stories in the Bible of Job or Esther or any of the disciples and apostles and people who... I'm sure outside looking in, there were people going, well, that's obviously like, that's God's best for you. And that's the God you're serving. Like you're in prison or you are being hung upside down because of what you believe, or you are walking in to the King's throne room, fully prepared and expecting to die. Like that's what Esther was doing. She didn't know the end of the story. 
but all these people were doing it and in that moment they f- had full confidence that god this is what is this is where you've placed me for such a time as this and and we we kind of take these little bits and pieces of of scripture as these like quippy encouragement so that we tell ourselves like you know i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so like i can get through this and we can pray and have a baby and it's like okay but if we read the context of that scripture you know he was saying that in the midst of a prison cell and the scriptures before that are i've had a lot and i've had absolutely nothing and in every circumstance i've been able to be content because i can do all things through christ And so that's just where we are, is whether we have a child tomorrow or whether it's 10 years from now that we have a child or whether we never do, which is really hard for people to fathom when we say that is like, or what if we don't? Like, what if we don't? Do we still believe that God is good even if we have 10 or zero children? Like, then what? Then how do we view God? How do we serve God? Are we, do we still believe and trust and know that He is who He says that He is? And the answer is yes, we have to.